Ladies and gentlemen, if we would like to uh, begin the uh, Budget and Finance Committee meeting. Before we begin, uh, Councilman Pulley, I think you, you have an introduction for us. Yes, thank you. I appreciate a uh, moment of personal privilege here. I, I just wanted to introduce a young man who has come with me and is going to be with me for a couple weeks before he uh, takes off to China. This is Grady Singleton. He's one of my old Eagle Scouts who's been with me since the day he uh, joined the Cub Scouts, and he ran, rose through the ranks, just finished uh, his degree at Vanderbilt, and now he's off to China after he finishes saving the world in the next two weeks with us. So, uh, Grady Singleton. Thank you. Glad Thank to you. have you, Grady. <laughs> All right, if we would uh, start with RS 2016-321, Pride Moore and Pardue, the sponsors, approves an agreement between the Emergency Communications District and Metro Government for the services and reimbursement of costs pertaining to enhanced 911 services. Newly seconded. Do we have any discussion? Seeing none in the queue, all in favor? Opposed? Resolution passes. RS 2016-322, Pride Moon Party to Sponsors, approves an intergovernmental, intergovernmental agreement between the United States government and the National Fire Department to allow billing to Medicare for ambulance services. <laughs> Duly seconded. Any discussion? Councilman Mendez. Thanks. Um, I'm just wondering whether we could get, uh, maybe from the administration, a brief description of um, th this resolution. And then I'm probably going to have a follow-up question. of the, the way I read the attached contract, um, it, it read like um, Metro is going to be submitting to the federal government for Medicare reimbursements. And I'm curious whether we've got experience doing that. We, we have some of the fire department here, if you'd like to. this. For years, it's nothing that is new. We just have to do the agreement every single year with um, CMS. And as part of that agreement, we it's for all the ambulance services that we provide. So for every ambulance that we send out on the road, we bill either an insurance company or the patient for that service. And this allows us to bill Medicare for that service, and they require the contract every year. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Seeing no others, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Resolution passes. RS 2016 323, Pride More Part sponsors, approves a contract between the State Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services and the Metro National Fire Department for Emergency Transportation Services. Duly seconded. Do any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Resolution passes. RS 2016-324, Pride Moore Party Sponsors, approves an annual litter, litter grant from the State Department of Transportation to the Davidson County Sheriff's Office Department to, to, for litter pickup along roads and highways within Metro Nashville. And duly seconded. Do we have any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Resolution passes. I am so glad of that. We definitely need it. RS 2016-325, Pride Moore Party sponsors, approves an agreement between Metro Nashville Police Department and Tennessee State University for extra duty police services during various campus events. Approval and duly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Resolution passes. RS 2016-326, Pride Moore and Party sponsors, approves an agreement between the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration and Metro Nashville Police Department to provide police assistance with the Middle Tennessee Drug en Enforcement Task Force. I have a motion? Second. Duly seconded. Seeing any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. RS 2016 16327 Pride Moore and Party Sponsors approves an application for the Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant from the United States Department of Justice to the Metro Nashville Police Department for equipment and supplies 
for direct support for basic police in service and specialized training. Do I have a motion? Duly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Resolution passes. RS-2016-328 provide more parties and sponsors and approves an amendment to a grant from Tennessee Department of Finance and Administration, the Metro Police Department to support mental health services and criminal and justice system advocacy to victims of violent crimes. Do have, duly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion pass, uh, resolution passes. Resolution 2016-329, Pride Warren Henderson's sponsors, approves a grant from the Tennessee State Library and Archives to the Nashville, Police Li Nashville Public Library to provide library services and materials for the disadvantaged. Uh, motion. Du and duly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Resolution passes. RS-2016-330, Pride Moore and Henderson sponsors, approves a, li a Library Service and Technology Act grant from the Tennessee State Library and Archives to the Nashville Public Library to purchase Chromebooks and peripherals for library consumers who lack technology tools. A motion. And duly second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Resolution passes. RS-2016-331, Pride Moore and Gilmore sponsors, approves a grant from the Tennessee Department of Health to the Metro Board of Health to provide food safety services and ensure environmental assessments are conducted for all foodborne disease outbreaks. Duly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Resolution passes. RS-2016-335, Pride Moore, Allen, and Withers, the sponsors, approves a grant from the Metro Development and Housing Agency to the, Met to the Metro Historical Commission for development proposals using federal funds to determine potentially adverse effects to historic properties. And duly second, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Resolution passes. RS-2016-336, Pride Moore sponsors, authorizes the Metro Department of Law to compromise and settle the claim of Courtney Ackridge against Officer Ryan Martin Finnegan in the amount of $52,947.75. Do I have a motion? Duly second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Resolution passes. Bills on second reading, BL 2016-302, Pride Moore Allen Elrod sponsors, grants a franchise to Tennessee Backhaul Network LLC to construct, operate, and maintain a telecommunications system within Metro under the provisions of Metro Code of Laws. Um, do I have a motion? And duly second. Uh, Councilman Glo uh, we're going to, well, I'm going to do it. I'm going to move to defer two meetings. Uh, the uh, planning meet, planning uh, commission hasn't met yet, and they meet on August the 11th. So I'm, I'm asked to be deferred to meetings. And uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Resolution. Well, it is deferred two meetings to August. The second meeting in no first meeting in September. BL 2016-328, Pride Moore Murphy, the sponsors, amends the Metro Code to comply with state law regarding assignment of Metro's retirement plans and addressing claims under domestic relations orders. Do I have a motion? Move. Duly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Bill passes. BL 2016-329, Pride Moore and Elrod, the sponsors, Amends the Metro Code to bring taxi cabs into uniformity with the MCL sections concerning other passenger vehicles for hire. Do I have a motion? Duly second. Councilman Glover. Just a brief question here. Can you explain, um, and maybe it's Mr. Jameson that needs to do, what exactly does this do? I tried to read it and I, I kind of got lost there. 
Fields is going to approach the podium here in a second. Briefly, the most significant change is it allows the TLC to set fees, to charge fees that they set. Uh, Mr. Fields, I will defer to you. Uh, and during the last council period, in the last four years, uh, we began trying to make all of the ordinances uh, be very similar. Since we have six that we are responsible for, it makes it a little bit easier. What this does is a couple of things. One, it does some housekeeping that is just things that we should have done years ago to take out. It also helps level the playing field with the taxi cabs, with the transportation network companies. So without uh, what we think is without uh, compromising public safety, we're going to be able to make some changes that should have a very positive impact on the taxi cab uh, operators in Nashville. Uh, okay, so in other words, the, the two companies that you're talking about, the network, uh, Correct. the two companies, then this will allow then the local uh, locally owned taxi companies to compete more com or be more competitive? Well, I think what it'll do, it will, uh, for instance, one of the things that uh, we do now is we can only have a one-year permit. Okay. Uh, one of the problems is we could spread that. We could pretend with a change, it would allow us to have two years of permitting or three years of permitting rather than just a single year. As it is, the, transport, the transportation network companies don't have to get any licensing of any kind, so they just basically go to the streets, and the tax cab drivers feel like they've been treated, uh, uh, not being treated as well, and we're going to do the best we can within uh, the law that we have. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fields. Seeing no others in the queue, all in favor? Opposed? Bill passes. BL 2016-331, Councilman Glover is the sponsor, amends the Metro Code pertaining to residential sanitary sewage pumping systems. Count Councilman Glover, you uh, duly seconded, you, ha you have an amendment? Mr. Jamison, I don't know, do, do you want to do you want to explain or do you want to have water explain the amendment? It's really it's really pretty simple. It's just more of a housekeeping, I think, than anything right, else. Right. It just makes clear that the fee applies per residential connection. That's all. Okay. That so I would move the amendment. Okay. And duly second. Any discussion on the amendment? All in favor of the amendment? Aye. Opposed? Amendment passes. Moved as amended. Any discussion on the on the bill as amended? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Bill passes as amended. BL 2016-333, Pride Moore Elrod and Hager, our sponsors, authorizes Metro to accept a donation of $50,000 from MAPCO Express Incorporated for the purchase of modifying traffic signals at the intersection of Robinson Road and merit. Uh, duly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Bill passes. BL 2016-334, Council Mendez and Allen am amends BL 2015-1281, which authorizes Metro Development and Housing Agency to accept payments in lieu of taxes for, from its leases operating low-income housing tax credit properties and revise, a revising the program for determining qualifications and eligibility for such payments. And duly seconded, Councilman Mendez. Stand by. All right. Thanks. Um, with a brief explanation, I'd like to uh, move to defer this one meeting. Um, this bill is trying to do two things with the pilot program that started last year. Um, one, it would increase the cap from two million to two and a half million. And then the second thing it would do would be to expand um, the planning process to include the planning department. Right now, we need Metro Finance to tell us that there's room under the cap, and MDHA comes and tells us that the location is a good location for one of these projects. Um, the amendment, or this bill would change that to add planning to the mix to make sure that in addition to it being consistent with MDHA's comprehensive plan, that the location would be consistent with Nashville Next. And I've been asked by um, MDHA to um, give them a little bit more time to work out that uh, a coordination mechanism with planning. So that's the reason to defer, defer this for one meeting. Okay. Any discussion on the deferral? There's a motion on the floor for one meeting deferral. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes for one meeting deferral. 
PL 2016-336, Councilman Glover allows a local business preference on competitive bidding and to allow matching of low bids. Councilman Glover, um, you move for approval. Do, um, and do the second, any, any discussion? Councilman Foley. Yes, uh, maybe uh, we can get the sponsor to tell us a little bit about what uh, what this bill intends to do. Okay, he wasn't in the queue, that's why. Councilman Glover. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Jameson, I'm, I'm gonna ask you, if you don't mind, to kind of explain it. I'll, I'll give you the background of what brought me to, to filing this. Uh, there was a company here in town that we did not award a bid to that was considerably less money. Um, and first of all, I think we need to try to do business with local business if we can, uh, if it's ever possible. Second of all, I think it's our job to protect the taxpayers and not spend more money to do the same job than we have to. And so that's what brought me to, to filing this bill. So with that, Mr. Jameson, I'll let you kind of explain the, the legal mechanics of it. The uh, mechanics of the bill was that during the procurement process, the board would be required to accept the bid um, if there is a low tie bid by a local, that is Davidson County, uh, business vendor. It would also allow um, the bidding entity to express in its initial submission that it would, be, it would be willing to meet the lowest responsible bid if he's not the low respondent. That's mechanically what applies. Um, the legal terrain is, is dicier. Um, the courts of appeals, Supreme Court, have typically expressed um, decades long uh, objections to local bidding preferences. What they admonish local municipalities to do is to have flat, neutral um, bidding processes. What happened was that in 2013, state legislation that essentially said the same thing in Title 12 was amended, wholesale amendment. And there was a section that expressly prohibited state agencies and local governments from applying bidding preferences. They eliminated local governments, and now it only applies to state agencies. What Councilman Glover has done is to deftly thread that needle to submit this, what is arguably a legal bidding preference, but it is it is incumbent upon me to tell you this sort of legal terrain that has existed. I should also mention that there was an AG opinion in 2013 that expressly prohibited the application of uh, local bidding preferences, but two exceptions to that. Number one, that was applying an act called the Municipal Purchasing Law of 1983, and Metro is exempt from that particular law. Secondly, the AG opinion is just that. It's an opinion. It's not binding, um, not binding authority. So this gets at the issue of awarding local companies when in conflict with out-of-state companies. Is that what I'm hearing? If, it's the, if it is tied, at least tied for, uh, for the bid, then you would go with the local provider as opposed to an out-of-county bidder. Local and being defined as Davidson County. Defined tied. Does that mean if uh, the local bidder is one dollar higher than the out of state bidder, then this does not apply? Right. It's, if it's if there's a distinct distinction between the two, the procurement board goes with the low provider. But keep in mind that the second provision of this allows the local company to state in its initial submission, we will meet any low bid. Okay. M Mr. Cooper, would you like to comment any further on the legality of this? I think Mr. Jameson adequately addressed the legal issues. It's um, Although there is um, this one statute that was amended to remove local governments from the, the strict prohibition that was in the statute, if you look at the body of case law in this area, it's pretty clear that local bidding preferences are... Uh, disfavored by the courts. Okay. Do we already have anything in place that addresses preferences for local businesses in awarding these kind of contracts and anything we're doing right now? No, sir. Nothing. We do for local? No, I, I do not believe there's any in the purchasing code. Nikki, do you know? There's nothing in the... Uh 
there's nothing in the procurement code. Um, there's questionable language in the procurement regulations, but we have advised purchasing that that language is legally suspect and is not to be followed. Um, so right now, if there is a a tie bid, which is very, very rare, uh, purchasing uses neutral factors to determine who the winner is. Is there a concern moving forward if we give preference to local companies that we should institute preferences for small businesses, women, minorities, uh, any of these other issues that might arise? Well, we, we do have a small women-owned business um, incentive program. It is not a it's not a quota or or anything. Um, so that so that provision does already exist. Um, but as far as as local bidding preference, um, that has not been been done. What happens if you have two local companies that tie for this? I don't know. I, I don't know the I guess the purchasing department would make some other non price determination in making that award okay I, I'm just you know I just wonder about uh, certain consequences that might arise out of this thing we instituted so I'm just trying to explore it the best I can um, that's all I have right now thank you but I think like Ms Eki said um, tie bids are very rare so it, it's not the Having two come in, two locals that are tied, would be even more rare. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Council, Councilman Cooper, John Cooper. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was wondering if somebody um, was here, and I appreciate the discussion very much, to walk us through a little bit the procurement process. So price is clearly not the only criteria in awarding um, contracts. What are the other factors and how are they evaluated in scoring bids? Okay. Uh, when there is an RFP process, and that's different from a standard uh, invitation to bid, an ITB, which would be just generally uh, low cost. Uh, that's how those would be awarded. But for an RFP process, there, um, there's a total availability of points of 100 points. Uh, typically, those points uh, are assigned based on different categories, and those categories generally include uh, qualifications, scope of work, cost, sometimes a small and minority business component, and experience. There's usually four to three to five categories, four to five categories for each RFP. Then you uh, would have an evaluation committee assigned to uh, review and evaluate all proposals submitted. And the, the award goes to the, would be given to the company or provider that provided the best overall proposal to Metro, not necessarily an individual component of the RFP. So whoever got, let's suppose you had a uh, hundred points available, and the highest score was 95, the the bid, the bidder with the 95 points would get the award. So is local um, employment one of the factors which you could get points? Uh, not today. Not today. And how how would one change that if if the mayor and the council wanted to change that? Would that be a an ordinance that would change that? Uh, I'll have to defer to, to John. I mean, as far as the, the categories of assignments, I think that's pretty much up to the purchasing agent, unless there are there is some specific component that may be contrary to law, and then the legal department would tell us whether or not uh, that was a, a select criteria that we could add. Did you want to add something? And we think that a local bidding component would not be consistent with the law. So if, if you gave points for being a local provider, um, there are the, the same legal concerns with that. Well, this is less a local provider than who is performing the work, just local, local jobs. I mean, maybe we're saying sort of the same thing, but it, it's a difference. But, you know, it could be an out-of-state general contractor in effect but who is agreeing to hire local people. It's back to Proposition 3, really, in terms of scoring an application. 
uh, with a with a local employment yeah. it, perspective. I don't think that's part of this, but okay. right. That's not that's not part of this. And and like you said, with the amendment three, there is the state law in place now that says that we cannot require any kind of um, local workforce component in our contracting. But could you score it in this points evaluation? Well, but if, if you were awarding the contract based upon the scoring, then that's essentially doing the same thing. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Council Lady Gilmore. Uh, thank you. Um, I appreciate uh, Councilman uh, Glover's spirit. I was looking at the part about the lowest bid part, and I wanted to see if uh, Mr. Jamieson could just speak more to that. So you have to be the local bidder and have the lowest bid, or? No, just... what this would allow is that in those instances where you are the low tie bidder, you've tied with, a, let's say, an out-of-state uh, vendor, if you're the local provider, then this ordinance, if passed, would allow the procurement board, would require them to award that favorability to the local vendor. So a tie goes to the local business. I got you. Um, I also had a, a question, something that I heard recently someone shared with me. What happens when um, we have lower bids and a person is awarded that contract, and then after they are awarded that contract, they realize that everything was not a part of the total bid? So in other words, they still had to go, even though it was awarded, uh, they still have to kind of piece in bids or, or, or bid on certain things that the, the review committee was under the impression that they had given the bid for and someone else had lost that bid. How, what, what could you explain? explain I think two there? things. I may defer to Talia on this, but historically what they will do is, A, make note of that bidder's uh, bidding history. So if he submitted bids that proved to be inaccurate previously, they, they recall that. Secondly, they typically have recall provisions within the bid. That's reluctantly pulled, I believe, but I'll defer to Talia to see where they go from there. I, th I think you've characterized it correctly. I mean, even during the um, contracting process, sometimes you will have a vendor that um, initially has the award, and then during contract negotiations, they want to change the rules after you've um, um, kind of decided on who the bidder it is. And in that case, if uh, someone wants to go above and beyond what was in their original proposal, sometimes those are canceled. And then you go back to the next bidder to start renegotiating with that second vendor. So um, it, um, it can be complicated during those negotiations. Okay, thank you. Okay, and then let me pull it back to that. I just wanted to get some follow-up um, with, with that. So how is it a, a way, because I see what uh, Councilman Glover is doing, that we can make it legal, but somehow give, I guess, could we do goals? Is, is there a difference between having goals for a local bidding provision versus what's here so that we can make it or? Goals are just aspirational. It's not a preference. So um, one is not awarded a contract just on the basis of goals. You still have to make, meet the RFP and invitation to bid requirements. And the scoring is not based on local presence. Okay, um, I just was offering that up. I didn't know if uh, that was something that Council Member Glover was open to, um, considering that this was, um, as it is presented now, legal. I, I guess with illegal, it would get us closer to, to what he's aspiring to do. I don't know, maybe he could speak to that. Councilman Glover, would you like to respond to that? Yeah, I, I think that, um, and Mr. Jameson gave me several options. Uh, of what was available, and, and Mr. Jameson, I don't want to speak on your behalf, but this is the one that we felt like was the most viable, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Um, you know, I, I'm, and I will ask this question, uh, uh, with regards to amendments on, on this bill, uh, when is my last opportunity to amend here? Uh, you're on second reading, so uh, preferably you could also amend on third with a suspension of the rules. But we well, I, I don't want to do that. I, I, let, let me let me tell you the dilemma we have. The I set in a, a hearing, and a local company had bid, and they were lower priced than the company who got awarded the price. When I sat down and I look at the rubric on the way they gave the scoring, if you took the pricing and the way they did that, it was it wasn't correct. 
the, the, the score was not given to the local vendor a, a, appropriately as it was to, uh, I'll say, the lowest bid, because if you took everything in proportion, it, it just wasn't done right. So it's kind of subjective as to the way the scoring is given. Uh, and that's what prompted this bill. Uh, first of all, I, I mean, I, I want to be legal, and I want to make sure we do it correctly, but also if we've got local businesses that are employing people locally, and they have a lower bid, then I certainly think that we need, and they're qualified to do the job, then I certainly think that we need to be giving them the bid. Uh, and so that's what prompted that. So, I mean, uh, Mr. Jameson, I'll leave it up to you. If, if I need to defer one meeting to, to come back and work on a little more language, I'm happy to do that. Uh, I'm not interested in lawsuits, as I've said before. Uh, I, I'm, but I am interested in fixing a problem where we're saving taxpayers money. I just don't think we need to spend eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars more, a million dollars more for a project when it's not necessary. Given the questions raised, I would suggest a one meeting deferral and allow us to do that. Okay, then I'll I'll do that, Chair. I'll, I will move to defer one meeting. Thank you, Councilman, and and I'm we're going to save the, the discussion. If you want to discuss the deferral, we'll discuss deferral, Council Lady. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we'll save all the discussion for the time it's brought up again. Yeah, I did. Okay. Is that okay, Mr. Chair? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yeah, and I was just really listening because I do like to listen. And so when I was listening to Council Member Glover, it seemed that he had an issue with the rubric as well. And I was just saying maybe that is something that we need to review or maybe take that into account as we formulate the bill. That was going to be my only comment in listening to what he had to share. It and, seemed and like it was an issue with the rubric as yeah, well. And, and uh, Council Lady, I think, I think you're right. When you said that, that's really what kind of prompted me to think about that. And that's why I'm, I'm really open to deferring one meeting to, to, to try and sit down and see if we can uh, nail into that a little bit better. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councilman. Are there anyone that wants to wish to speak about the deferral? If not, the motion is a one meeting deferral. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Meetings defer, uh, the bills defer one meeting. Seeing no other business on the agenda, that concludes Budget and Finance Committee. <laughs>